Hello, my name is Patrice Steller and welcome to my video presentation of my mini lesson for our group author study of Virginia Hamilton. My group partner Stephanie Papazoglu and I chose Virginia Hamilton for our author study because her work satisfies Norton's criteria of being both culturally authentic and of high literary merit. This specific mini lesson is for second grade students and it focuses on her collection of American black folk tales called The People Could Fly. This lesson specifically focuses on the title story entitled The People Could Fly. We used American folklore because it really reflects the values and beliefs of the culture. For example, the importance of freedom is one of the common themes in African folklore. And you would see that in these stories, in particular the one that is the focus of this mini lesson, where the slaves dream of being able to fly to freedom. African folklore is rooted in the oral storytelling tradition, so a read aloud would be an important aspect of this mini lesson. According to Norton, the art of storytelling, the role of the storyteller, and the participation of the audience are very important in African folklore and influence the literary characteristics of the tales. African American folk tales also reflect these values. When African folklore came to the American South by means of the slave trade, it retained its original characteristics while adapting to its new environment. And according to Hamilton, out of the context the plantation slaves made in their new world, combined with memories and habits from the old world of Africa, came a body of folk expression about the slaves and their experiences. The slaves created tales in which various animals took on the characteristics of the peoples found in the new environment of the plantation. A rationale for this mini lesson is that students will look for Hamilton's use of figurative language in her stories. Hamilton uses simile, metaphor, and imagery to capture the feelings of the slaves as they dream of flying to freedom. And here's an example from the, the folk tale, The People Could Fly. And they would walk up on the air like climbing up on the gate, and they flew like blackbirds over the fields black shiny wings flapping against the blue up there. So you can really see Hamilton's strong use of simile, metaphor, and powerful imagery to portray the feelings of the slaves as they were flying to freedom. The objective of the lesson is for students to be able to find examples of simile and metaphor and imagery using the folk tale the people could fly. And then they would create original stories using figurative language. From, based on the mini lesson that is presented using this story. The procedure would be first to engage the students' prior knowledge by discussing, discussing slavery. I would first show them a map of Africa, show it to them on the globe so they would have some idea of where it is, and I would explain to the students that there was a time in American history where people owned other people as slaves. I would have them respond to their feelings about slavery and freedom by collecting those feelings on a chart. So we would record feelings about slavery such as sad, hurt, pain, and then cautioning feelings of freedom such as happy, joy, light. And we would save these for use later in the lesson. I would also introduce the concepts of figurative language, specifically simile and metaphor, by introducing this anchor chart to the students. I would explain that a simile compares two things using the words like or as, and an example would be the cloud is as fluffy as a pillow. And then I would explain that a metaphor compares two things by saying something is something else. So I would show them the difference between the simile, the cloud is as fluffy as a pillow, and the metaphor, the cloud is a fluffy pillow. And I would also have them look for use of figurative language in the short story or the folk tale, The People Could Fly. After the anchor chart was introduced, I would conduct a read aloud of the folk tale, The People Could Fly, discussing examples of similar simile and metaphor as we went along. And then independently, the students would discuss strong emotions with a partner and they would create a story using these emotions and they would also have to incorporate figurative language into the story. So this is an overview of the procedure of the lesson. Here's an example of one type of anchor chart that could be used to describe simile and metaphor. 
And then the group read aloud is a very important part of the mini lesson. I would gather the students together so they would have that feeling of community. In the African American folklore tradition and the African folklore tradition as well, the storyteller played a very important role. They would mimic the dialogue, they would use lots of body action, rhythm would be important to reflect the language that is used in the story. And also audience participation becomes an important aspect of the oral storytelling tradition. So during the read aloud, students would be prompted to listen for examples of simile, metaphor, and imagery. And the teacher would point out examples. For example, in the story of the people can fly, the description of the slave master is such. Say he was a hard lump of clay, a hard glinty coal, a hard rock pile, wouldn't be moved. So that is an example of a metaphor saying that the slave master was a lump of clay. Just as I had introduced to the students over here, the cloud is the fluffy pillow. And for learners who might be a little bit more tactile and have trouble taking abstract concepts and making them concrete, I could even pass around a piece of charcoal or a rock or something, some object that is hard so that they could get a feeling for that description. And then a simile that comes from the story that people could fly is the description of Sarah flying. Sarah is one of the main characters who is a slave, and she dreams of flying to freedom, and that is described in this regard. Say she just rose as free as a bird, as light as a feather. And I would emphasize to the students during the read aloud of the story that this is an example of simile, because Sarah is described as rising as free as a bird and as light as a feather. And I could even have a feather that I would pass around to the group so they could get a sense of the feeling of the lightness and the lightness that the slaves must have felt. I would then instruct the students after the read aloud to return to their seats and talk to a partner about a time when they experienced a strong emotion. It could be emotions such as fear, anger, sadness, happiness, joy, excitement. I would point to the anchor chart and remind the students what they learned about the use of simile and metaphor. And I would then instruct the students that they must write a story about a time when they experienced a strong emotion. They must use at least one simile and one metaphor in their story. And again, I would remind them of the feelings that, about slavery that we discussed at the beginning of the lesson. They could incorporate these feelings into their stories. And I would also remind them to refer to the anchor chart as they're writing their story so that they could have an example of simile and metaphor. As the students go back to their seats and talk with a partner about their individual experiences, I would be circulating throughout the room helping students who might be stuck for ideas and I would ask them prompting questions if they were having trouble coming up with an idea. I would say, tell me about a time when you laughed really hard. What was so funny about it? Or tell me about a time when you were really angry. Why were you so mad? Describe what that felt like. So I really try to help prompt the students in the right direction for relaying their stories. And maybe even share some of my own personal experiences. I would gauge the effectiveness of this lesson by asking students to read portions of their story. I will add similes and metaphors from the student stories to the anchor chart over here. So, for example, when we talk about sadness and hurt, maybe somebody would come up with an expression like, it hurt like a needle. And I would prompt them for their use of their own simile and metaphor in their stories to express their different feelings. And then at the end of the lesson, after the students have shared some of their examples and I have recorded them on the anchor chart, I would ask the students to tell their classmates what they liked about each other's stories because I like the community idea of sharing and also the stories would come alive which really reflects the oral storytelling tradition that is so important when working with Virginia Hamilton's works. So this is my mini lesson presentation of Virginia Hamilton's collection, The People Could Fly, specifically her, her American, uh, African American folk tale, The People Could Fly and its thematic representation of the feeling of freedom and the dreams of freedom that slaves had. Thank you.